Hi and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own backgrounds in Paint.net. Just wanted to say right off the bat, this video is for non-graphics artists, people like me. I'm a software developer and this video is a little different than most of my videos. Usually my videos are software that I've created, but I did not create Paint.net, but I use it all the time to I have to create graphics for a lot of the software I build, and I don't like to, you know, copy images. I don't have the rights to it, and plus it's too expensive to buy stock photos for all my clients. So whenever I do a new project, I just kind of make a, I'll play around with Paint.net for a little bit, and just want to, you know, there's no right or wrong answer as you're doing this. I just kind of play around till I build something that I like. There's a few tools that I use in here that tend to, some of them come out pretty good. Some of them, you know, aren't very good, so I start over, but I'll just give you a real quick demo of some of the features I use. I was just showing you the line tool there. That was how you create your own, you know, you can play around. I'm gonna, now I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I'm going to change it to a filled shape to make sure the color draws in. And play around with whatever colors you like or images. I, I've done this a hundred different ways, and I, I get a different image every time. Or, you know, some are kind of similar, but... And now I'm going to use the uh, motion blur just to kind of scatter the picture out a little bit. You know, as you move the angle there, you'll see it kind of changes the direction of the motion blur. So here I'm going to just say edit motion blur, repeat motion blur. So that just does the same effect again. Makes it a little bit, you know, you can do it as many times as you want. So that just gives me the picture a little bit scattered out so I get some different images. Now I'm going to go to the distort menu and show you polar inversion. This is one I use a lot. What I usually do is just move it until the curves kind of disappear. And then I'll adjust the two levers here just to kind of, it just changes the way that as you move, it, you know, you'll get slightly different images. This one doesn't look very good. Sometimes you get a kind of neat looking image just as you're moving this around. This one's actually not a, I didn't do as good a combi you know, combination of the, set up at the beginning but still it's we can use whatever we create because there's some tools that as I you know do a few things that I have no idea what this does I'm actually trying it okay I don't like that so we're gonna cancel that but, okay now I'm gonna go back to the uh, distort menu or oh, that's the brightness contrast I'm sorry so if you wanna move things around a little bit just to make your picture look you know you can change it up make the colors yeah sometimes you like the when I create this time, I'm going to say I'm going to go to uh, distort. This is the curves under the adjustments menu. And as you, this kind of just affects the lighting of how the image is like. So if you don't really like, if you have an image you kind of like so far, but the, you don't really like the way the colors are lit up, you can just kind of play around and it just kind of tells the image how it lights up. So it gives you a little bit different image as you move this around. Some I like, some I don't. So you know, whatever you. Again, this is there's no right or wrong answer doing this. It's just a matter of getting the image, you know, to something that's a little bit. Here's the levels. I'm going to reset it now. As you play around, you can change the level to different colors. Here, I'm going to adjust just the red. If I move it up, it'll increase the amount of red in the image. Or you can do that for blue or green, and just another way to change the way the background image is set up. So I'll go ahead and adjust the blues a little bit and the green and. So this is kind of ugly, to be honest, but, you know, that's the nice thing about this is by the time you can adjust the colors. As I move, I'm going to reset everything before I start because it's stored from a last selection. So if you want to change it up, that'll increase the saturation. That'll increase the brightness. And let's say you get something that's just as ugly as you can imagine. So one thing you can do is go to Adjustments, Invert Colors, and that'll just give you the exact opposite color of whatever you had selected. So didn't particularly like that, but I'll increase the brightness again, get us kind of back to where we were. So here it's a little bit more peachy looking or whatever color that is, kind of a puke brown color. But All right, so now I'm going to show you the tile reflection. This is one of my favorite features. This will kind of take the picture you have and, you know, you can make the tiles bigger, smaller. I don't really like the way this image looks so far, but give it a little time, show you a few more things we can do and eventually get it looking something semi neat. I mean, depends on what you're trying to create. But that, that looks okay. So we'll we'll leave that for there. Then I'm gonna go back to the curbs menu and reset it and I'll make my image just a little bit brighter. So give it just a little bit more. And that gives us kind of a 
contrasting you know between white and dark or light and dark. Now this is another thing I really like. If you go to frosted glass, you can kind of scatter your image a little bit, and that gives you, you know, it's just one way to kind of like kind of like spray painting or just throwing the paint onto a surface, but it gives you some you know a little bit different uh, German and Bertha color. So that's a little bit darker version of that same picture. That, that could look you know cool for some type of thing. So again, as you change the brightness and contrast, you can get a completely different image, you know, from the, what you already had. And I'm going to go back, and this is a, I'm going to reset it again. And if you increase the saturation a little bit, you can kind of change some of the colors up. There, I'm going to make it a little bluer. I think that looks kind of neat. We'll make it a little bit brighter. I don't really like that. We'll go back to where we had it. Okay. So, again, that's just another, depending on what type of image you're trying to create, but, you know, this could be a Let's say you only like part of the image. You don't really like the rest of it. You can crop it to selection. And I'm going to resize it back to 1080 by 720, which is kind of the size Google likes for videos. So now we got a little bit you know, fuller screen version of that same image. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a glow. So if you want to make the, the image a little either brighter, or you can you know, increase the brightness or the contrast a little bit. That's too much there. Sorry. Okay, and we'll go back a little bit, make it a little bit deeper looking colors. There's just there's a whole bunch of ways you can just play around with this till you find something you like. I sometimes I'll just create, you know, this is a pretty cool thing. The I think it's called the Viginette tool. As you circle it in, it'll kind of draw. So if you want to, you know, only highlight a certain part of your image, you can also highlight which you can move this around to say which vertical or where you want the uh, little circle to appear. Well, that's kind of neat, except for I don't really like the fact that only part of my image has a... So I'm going to give a little bit of a zoom blur. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Alright, so now I'm going to go back to the uh, polar inversion again. Uh, this is a cloud. I don't really like this. Sometimes, sometimes it gives you a cool picture, but it used the colors from your selection, not the colors from your image. So uh, every now and then I'll use that for something. But. Okay, so here, this is where it starts to look kind of cool. You know, as you get the right color combination, you get some deep colors on a dark background. I think it looks, you yeah. know, but you can play around how big a tiles you want. Do you want small or big? So I'm kind of, I think that looks kind of cool. So now what I want to do, I'm going to, crop it down to this area again so I get only the kind of highlighted lit up part I'm going to resize it back to the 1080 by 720 and now I'm going to go to the uh, polar inversion this is what we've already shown you but so I'm going to kind of play around a little bit to get it to where it gets rid of the curves once I get to kind of a sweet spot where and I'm going to move that around a little bit. And you'll see. Sometimes you get, you know, it depends on what your image looks like, but this is kind of what I wanted because I wanted to fill up my entire image with what I have. And now I'm going to go back to the uh, distort menu and go to tile reflection again now that we have a slightly larger image. Oh, this is the, I'm going to scatter it one more time. So that gives gives us an entire image. This is kind of, you know, it's either looks like either something stars or pixelated or you know, whatever you. But there, I kind of like this. It gives us a little bit of a. It's almost like a frosted glass or you know. So that's what the effect's called. So, now here, this is where it starts looking kind of neat. I think. So depending on what type of a background you're trying to do, but you may this could work as a. You know, the background for, for part of a game or for a wall or even for advertising or whatever you're building but you know you can make the tile size smaller or bigger all right now what I want to do is I want to show you how real quickly to show a uh, how to put a, a border on it I usually I know you can just draw a straight line but it's easier to me to use the rectangle tool and I'll go to shape 
Make sure the rectangle tool is selected and go to the shape outline. That's what you want to select here. So now I'm going to just put a little white background on each side of the border. You can put it whatever size you want. I, this would, if you're putting this image on a dark background, then you might want to use this to kind of make the image stand out a little bit. And again, I, you know, I'm not a, a graphics artist. I failed kindergarten because I colored outside the lines. So the whole point of this video was just to give you a, just a, an idea to how to get you started. You can make your own. I'm sure you can do better than I can do. I was just showing you quickly while I'm, uh, you know, making a video, but. It's something that I, I think I, I use it a lot. I'll, you know, I make a lot of backgrounds for software because I don't like to, again, as I said, I don't like to steal images or I don't like to buy them for every project. It's it kind of expensive. So that's paint.net. It's, you know, it's a free tool. I, I think every programmer should learn how to use it. And even if you're not a programmer, it's something you'll probably find handy to make your own images. So you don't have to Google search. All right. Well, thanks for watching.